for joining us today, ladies and gentlemen. So much happening. I'm glad that Dr. Steve Pachenik, stevepachenik.com, co-author with Tom Clancy, many books, best-selling author in his own right, worked with major intelligence agencies, psychological operations, Delta Force, you name it, here to talk about the waterfront. Uh, this General Kelly appointment to chief of staff, uh, he was calling for this back when Trump was candidate Trump, right after he got uh, the, the nomination in July. So he's joining us to talk about that, to talk about the internal battles that are going on. First off, let me raise this with Dr. Steve Pichetti. The, the tail wagged the dog here of Hollywood, MSM, the Democrats, the neocons, the rhinos, trying to destroy the good foreign policies I see out of Trump on other areas into making Russia uh, public enemy number one. I, I, I don't know Dr. Pachenik's view on this. We'll get it right now, Doc. The truth of the matter is, for some time, as you correctly stated, from the very beginning of the Trump nomination, I said the first things would have to go would be the political operatives. Uh, Corey Landowski is an excellent operative. He's still involved, uh, although he had to leave. But the ones who were not excellent or the ones who were thrown out, Spicer and Priebus. The reason for that is they're really not qualified to run a complex system. The reason uh, General Kelly came in, and we had McMaster, we had Mattis, we have about six, seven generals now who are involved in the essential command of the White House and other important agencies, including the CIA with Pompeo, is that they're used to efficiency, they're used to effectiveness. They know very well that Russia is not our enemy. Now, what is happening is you've got, again, the ineffectual Republican Party, which couldn't pass Obamacare or couldn't repeal it, couldn't do anything. They had only seven years to learn about it. They had seven years to be able to improve it, and they proved to be totally incompetent. Uh, again, Ryan, uh, McLean, uh, Mc Mc McClellan, and our friend McCain. So what we have there is complete incompetency. Now, beneath that element of the so-called kabuki of politics is really what we concern the deep state, or what I call the, the honorable deep state. And they, in effect, are doing exactly what they were supposed to do and what I've been saying for a long time. Number one, we have had no discussion of the fact that Mattis and our generals in Iraq have been incredibly effective at taking down ISIS. The Russians know this. Uh, the Iranians have noticed this. What we have now is a problem that in five days we had a phased attack into Mosul and it was incredibly effective. You had heard nothing but nothing from the press about the phased victory in, in Mosul. The second part is that Iran had been our ally, and now they're beginning to turn against us. So once we went into uh, Mosul and we effectively took down ISIS, then the Iranians are starting to fight with us. Now, this is a conundrum. This is not something I expect the politicians to understand. I don't expect Congress to understand it. I think for the most part, they're really ineffectual. Sure, but we have a five-year, six-year deal Assad needs to reportedly move towards an open election now. Iran needs to move out. Right. And we need to move towards democratizing uh, Syria, correct? Right. Now, what's important, and you hit it on the head, Alex, and, and you're one of the few to discuss it. What's important now is that our forces are acting as a peacekeeping force in northern Syria. I've talked about it before. They're separating Erdogan's Turkish forces, who were our allies, as well as the Kurds, who did an incredible job. The YPG, primarily they're women fighters, and they were excellent. Exactly. So how long will we have to be there, though, uh, for this to be stabilized? Unfortunately, as I've said before, it's easier to create war. That was started by Bush Jr. and Cheney and the neocons. It's much harder to end a war. And I must give credit to our generals, all of them, Amadis, McMaster, Vodal, the head of special forces, because they are doing a yeoman's job, not in terms of kinetic killing, but in terms of negotiating and arbitrating peace treaties. And Rex Tillerson has done an excellent job in decreasing the size of the uh, State Department. And in turn, because he was head of 
Exxon Mobil, he knows all the Sunni and Shiite players. Now, to get something straight, what happened with Putin was, okay, Trump went along with these incompetent politicians in Congress who placed a misplaced sanction on the Russians. But the Russians are very clever, so is Trump. What Putin did, what we did not do was to allow our businesses to withdraw from Russia. In other words, our major businesses in the gas and the oil and in Air Force and whatever other material that Putin needs are still going forth. And what really happened, Putin said, well, I'm going to withdraw 722 American staff members of our Russian embassy. Meanwhile, in Moscow, there was never a great embassy. I worked out of there. I never really used it. I worked in the... Sure, so the real way to continue to accelerate the reforms in Russia is to continue the free market connections Correct. with the West. You, you had it right on the head, Alex. And what's happening is we're allowing the free markets to go in. So whatever sanctions we may have against a particular oligarch and all, that's part of the kabuki. The 722 people are really primarily Russian citizens who work in a non-secure area and the embassy. So this is all a kabuki. The reality is our intelligence, CIA, other intelligence units always work with the Russians, have always. Our military have always worked with the Russians because they have to. We're in Syria, it's a complicated situation. The Russians are very effective in what they do. Our military is very effective in what they do. And in turn, a, a, a general like Mattis, of the Defense Department of Sex uh, Death, says, look, we got a problem in Africa. And even Petraeus came forth and a lot of other generals who were involved saying, we can't give aid to every major a leader of a dysfunctional country in Africa. So what Trump has allowed the military to do is not only to be in the kinetic part, which is a minor part, but to be in really the negotiation, the strategy, and the, the literal... And they're having real now. strategy now. What do you make of the headlines that they're having debates about fully withdrawing from Afghanistan? Well, I think it's important. From my point of view, that was a war that was started by a neocon by the name of Zami Khalazad, who worked with me on the West Bank. He's and it's totally the longest-running war in U.S. history. Correct. But it was started by the, then that CIA that wanted some kind of things to get involved. Afghanistan has no strategic value to us. It's really an extension of Pakistan and the ISI or the Inner Service Intelligence Agency. For us, the real issues that are important are going to be China, Russia, to get out of the Middle East and pivot to where we need to pivot, which is really to Southeast Asia and to the China Sea, as well as monitor. Exactly, but the Chinese propagandists through our media really want to keep us in the Middle East. That's correct. Now you hit it on the... I think you're the best strategist. You hit it right on the head. Oh, no, China I can see the strategy, keep. and I can see Trump on every front following strategies that make sense for America, for prosperity, and for peace. But getting back to Dr. Steve Pachenik of StevePachenik.com, Watchdog Group asked Congress to probe Representative Washerman Schultz over fired IT aide who got caught with the laptops hidden. And what do you make of this, uh, Dr. Pachenik? Let me address first the Debbie Wasserman Schultz problem. There's no question the FBI and other agencies have to be involved in questioning her. She has no immunity whatsoever. I knew about her in Miami. She's not a very bright woman. She's got a loud mouth. Uh, she was a social worker. She was totally pandering to the left and to the old people in Miami. There's no question in my mind that the three brothers were clearly involved in, I'm sorry, I have dogs there, but they were I have dogs too. It's okay. Go ahead. Aiming or defrauding the, uh, our government, they were also involved in counterintelligence and in all forms of uh, infringement, kind of a financial terrorism in the United States. Now, if they were in fact backed by the CIA, the CIA has to be accountable for it and they're going to have to bring them back. What I suggest very strongly, and this is a warning to Pakistan, that I suspect these brothers have a strong connection to the ISI in Pakistan. And I would warn Pakistan to, to regroup them back to the United States and then send them back here for prosecution. And that the Democrats are the ultimate group just completely with, with no ideology, really, to sell everything and everyone out to a level never before seen. In a way, they are capitalists that they always criticize, but from a purely mercenary bent, 
but with an overall anti-America culture, which you'd have to have to be able to engage in such nasty activity. Let me put it more simply. You've said it very well. The, the truth of the Democrats are they're geriatric, they're 80, 78, 79. They're stupid. Most of them are not very bright. Totally they entitled. Not very well educated. And they're arrogant and very self-destructive. So you have the three elements here, which we worked on when Hillary came forth. I said to you, she's not very bright. She cannot see any strategic elements. Same thing with Diane Feinstein, boxer. All of them have the same attributes, and Maxine Waters, self-aggrandizement, parasitic behavior, self-destruction, and very low intelligence because... By the way, I should add you're a psychiatrist. I want you to psychoanalyze them when we come back. I know there's the whole Goldwater rule. There's Tipachenik, Tipachenik.com. It's just that this is a war. We're trying to cut off our funding, Infowarsstore.com. Uh, I should add you should get his great books, Tipachenik.com, both the fiction and nonfiction. Okay, going back to Steve Pachenik. Um, we were getting into Hillary's psychology, Madam President, I should say. Give us your, from afar, analysis of Trump, and then give us your analysis of the Democratic Party leadership. Let me say something, Alex. I may be a psychiatrist, but I'm, I'm your friend and I'm a friend of the show, and I've got to tell you something. I want you to understand that you are being praised by every time they make fun of you. I mean... You got to remember the old axiom, every knock is a boost. And I want you to turn that around because your mind is so sharp, you're so witty, that instead of, of being defensive, which I understand you could be, but you're far better on the attack. And quite honestly, they're increasing your, you know, your penetration of a market that they never had. Here's what I suggest. Your mind's too fast oh, come for on. what they do. Now, listen to me. I'm, I'm not being counted. I know you very well. I would suggest you either uh, invite Oliver on your show and have a discussion or, you know, go at it because you have a far better. Well, brain I, 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 I will invite him and his writers on because we all know yeah, Oliver yeah, no. is a composite. No, I understand, but I want just you and Oliver because the wit that you have is far sharper than anybody realizes. Let me. Let me tell you something about yourself that you don't appreciate. Whatever you are or you're not, you are an incredible wit that can absorb things at a very high speed. And you've got to use that as a weapon to basically say, okay, they've been knocking me down, but you know what? I'm still up. So you got an Anderson Cooper. Go and talk to him. I mean, Anderson can't match your own wit. We've invited them all on. They're all scared to come on. Well, then fine, then go on their show. And so you went with Megyn Kelly. What did it do? It increased your ratings. But the reality is you started with nothing. Infowars was nothing. And suddenly we have millions of people buying a lot of products. Google has to censor you. They censor me or Twitter has to censor. And the point of fact, take that as a point of compliment. That's your battle medal. You just went into one battle after another. And I'm saying to you, look. I have faith in your ability to absorb and to be able to respond so fast at the moment, even better than they are. I would not want to say that you're a better comedian, but I would honestly say you're a far better comedian, and you and I know that. So for you to be able to confront them, either on their show, your show, whatever you care about, it's not an issue of whether the product is good or not or whether you have to rationalize anything. You don't have to rationalize anything. The bottom line is I would want you to go face to face with these guys. And you know that I know that your mind is far faster, far sharper, far more incisive. You know, you're lethal when it comes to humor. And, the, you know, these are the new humorous so to speak they, they can't compare to the old line guys like bill hicks and others who you might have known about but these the bill hickses and the and the other you know the, the guys who really started the whole industry that's what you're like and when you come face to face with them use it don't be defensive that's fine if they don't like your product that's well you're nice to say that Let's get into the psychology of Hillary. You got cut off by the brain. Hillary, it, uh, there's, no, not, there's not very much psychology. I mean, I'm not going to put a diagnosis in her. I said day one when we went after her, she's not very bright. 
She's a manipulative individual. She's self-destructive. She's a sycophant. She has all the elements of what a classical politician is. But I said very early on, she's not bright. She has no concept of A to Z to Y. She has no strategic sense, neither did Bill. In some ways, Bill is smarter because he understood what he had to do, and he got caught on it. Hillary got caught on it, but she didn't care. They're parasitic in nature. Most of these politicians, Pelosi, Feinstein, they all have husbands who made a fortune, and they they color their hair with this absurd brown or black dye. So, I mean, they're parasites that are, you know, covered over with all kinds of nonsensical pharmaceuticals or, or, or you know, colors. The, the, the diagnosis for Trump isn't, and there is no mental diagnosis for Trump. Trump may be, and he may be forceful, he's aggressive, he's mercurial, he's this, he may be that. But the bottom line is he built a built multi-billion dollar organization having to deal with an assortment of people. Now, if the American Psychoanalytical Association thinks that they can make official medical diagnosis on Trump, I welcome them. And then I would welcome working with Trump and his family to sue the hell out of the American Psychoanalytical. I was trained by psychoanalysts at Harvard. And I warned the psychoanalysts at Harvard, mass mental health, you will go under in five years. I was right. They went under in five years. So basically, they're a small cult group. Freud had some input into our understanding, but Freudian theory is old. It's not applicable to many things. And they're a little group where they don't really have much experience in politics or government. I may be the only psychiatrist who's worked with four or five presidents directly and then went into the systems and helped them out. But I wasn't there to say, oh, he's crazy, she's crazy. I'm there to say, this is what you're going to do strategically. This is what you have to do tactically. What can I say? I couldn't have created a group of parasites that were 80 years old, Feinstein, Pelosi, 79, Maxine Waters, who confuses. I mean, it's so absurd that they're self-destructive. Uh, but a lot of the top billionaires themselves are moving to very remote areas. They're very paranoid. They believe things are going to collapse. Dr. Pachenik is an optimist. What do you think is going to happen? I think your latter point was right on the head. What's happening, and I've said it from day one, and you and I discussed it, and you thought I was a genius when I said it, but I'm still saying it's a devolution of power. The federal government is becoming more and more irrelevant. That's why the Rex Tillersons can come in. They can cut the State Department. There are 20,000 people. I could honestly say I could work with the State Department with about 10 people. Kissinger did that. Baker did that. Almost everybody else. It's the same issue that Kelly will come in. He will cut the staff. Uh, 50 percent or even more. The bottom line is very simple. None of our politicians either Republican or, or, or a Democrat, have ever really created a company or built anything. And the truth of the matter is America's waiting for the infrastructure. And that's the one thing I would say to Trump and to Kelly. Get rid of all the other nonsense. Let's start putting in money into the infrastructure. I don't know why Obamacare came up first. I don't know why anything else came up first. You have to get into the infrastructure. The minute we get into infrastructure, you will see the power of the different states, the counties, and the American people. Now, you got to remember also, at this present time, the economy is so good that we have a 2% growth rate. We should get to 4%. But at the same time, we have the lowest unemployment ever. That had nothing to do with Congress. That has nothing to do with the Senate. It has everything to do with the fact that we have small business people. Automation will present a very serious problem. And that problem is for the millennials and others because we're going to have to get into a gig economy or GIG uh, economy where an individual who's a millennial might have to have more than one job. I just met a young man, an African-American, he's 20 years old. He has a talent management agency. He has something else. He's involved in the National Guard. He has two or three businesses, and he's only 20 years old. But he's effective. The same thing down in the South. I see young people building up companies faster than anyone can imagine. The fact of Hollywood, they're finished. They can't make these five-minute infomercials. They can't make a five-minute spot on the Internet. So what happened with the Internet and our military and DARPA understood it, we broke up the federal government.
And that's why, in effect, our military understood this better than anyone. It, it's not an accident. I was trained in 1972 by Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. Tell you what, DARPA, back in 70 uh, seconds, I want to hear about this in 70 seconds. Five more minutes with Steve Pachenik. Getting back to Dr. Steve Pachenik, uh, who first predicted these net wars and cyber wars uh, 30-something years ago in his books. Uh, break down where you think we're currently at and the points you were trying to make. Well, what I'm trying to make is that the government itself is devolving. We don't need very much government anymore. And basically what's happening, we're going to the local government, the governors, the commissioners. For example, in the government, we have cyber issues. But if you have Proofpoint, the, cor the corporation, who's the only one that can do quantum encryption, which is a fancy way of saying that they can handle randomware that's coming all over the world, as opposed to what the government can do in cyber command. They have right to be now. small, they have to be fast moving, they have to be uh, d divided up, or they can be infiltrated. Well, yeah, but again, we're talking about a, a mass of people. That when you're attacking HBO, they're finished. When you're attacking Fox, you're talking about the sons of, uh, you know, a man who was 88 years old. They're not, they're not relevant. When you're talking about uh, TV, they're not relevant. When you're talking about movies, they're not relevant. So what's relevant? Twitter. You have become relevant because that's where they want to go to alternative news media. What's relevant? Proofpoint, a corporation that has quantum encryption that's way beyond anything we've ever had in the government because we don't have them the ability to fight the malware. What else is relevant? We are a formidable force. We can make a company in 24 hours, an LLC, and start it up. We can't do that in England. We can't do that in France. You can't do that in China. You can't do that anywhere in the EU. So what's happening, the EU will eventually break up. Brexit will occur. Scotland wants to go with the EU. Russia is already aligning itself with China and the United States, irrespective of what anybody else says. Africa is a point of strategic interest for China and ourselves. The Chinese just built a 400 railroad from Djibouti to Ethiopia. So what is happening is we're coming back to what I call the 16th century Dutch model, where the growth is going around the world and what the Chinese call the one belt, one road. And so they understand they don't want a conflict with the United States. North Korea doesn't want conflict with the United States. All that missile stuff is junk. That's just show. Because underneath it, he understands if we take away his missiles, then we're going to do to him what we did to Gaddafi and what we did to Saddam Hussein. And most leaders don't like that. So they don't trust the United States. It's not an issue we're going to war with them. We don't want war. We don't need the war. But we have four structures that can prevent it. Strategic, uh, mutual assured destruction, we know in the 60s, 70s, and 80s that it was involved, has worked. And we don't want to go to war. They don't want to go to war. We're not going to have a nuclear war. Where we will have problems, and this is what I've said for a long time, in the places where the media and the government hasn't looked at. And that's between China and India. Those two powerhouses, each have over a billion people, need water. And right now they have skirmishes over Butan, B-H-U-T-A-N, which is a small country, but they've been fighting there. Now, you don't have any exposure of that in the news. Why? Because they're not very bright. Most of the people... There's also are, almost no coverage of ISIS and Al-Qaeda being 99% destroyed. No, Huge correct. victory. So you, you explain it to me. If you ran a cable network or you ran the New York Times and you had no coverage of the fact that ISIS was destroyed in Mosul, ISIS is being destroyed in Raqqa, what, what kind of a paper are you? And, and now you're seeing India watching China's bid to court Putin, right? And that's, that's basically going into war. So all of the things that attacked you, you have to look at and say, wow, maybe I need more people to attack me because you're the key element and you're the person. Well, I appreciate I you being positive and trying to cheer me up. I know that. I'm celebrating it. I absolutely love it. Uh, thank you, Dr. Steve Pachenik.